Hello friends, you have great faith. Yes, you do. I'm telling you because we found out some time back that, that great faith has nothing to do with quantity, but all to do with a quality decision to believe God. So, welcome to the broadcast. My name is Larry Hutton. This is Larry Hutton Ministries broadcast. We're glad to have you with us. We have been studying the subject of the sixth sense. God in the natural gave you five physical senses in your natural humanity. But then in the supernatural, when you accepted God, He gave you this, this sixth sense. And it's a supernatural sense where you can tap into the blessings of heaven, where you can stop the gates of hell, where they can't prevail against it. So listen, friends, we've been studying. This is our 15th lesson on this subject. We're going to wind it up this subject with a, uh, we used to call it a humdinger down in my kind of, my territory. So uh, we're going we're gonna to study out the subject of faith some more. We've been talking about walking by faith versus walking by sight. How do you get your faith working? How do you receive from God? How do you stop Satan's fiery darts with faith? Just all the different things we've talked about. And there's so many more scriptures that you could still go to talking about the subject of faith. But we've been endeavoring to follow the Spirit of God and teach you what God wants you to hear. We've been teaching some things that I've already been hearing some say, well, I've never heard this before, man. I never saw that in the Scripture before. So we know we're helping people. So just keep your expector turned on. But I want to talk to you about a very famous story. Have you ever heard the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Oh, yeah, Brother Larry, I've heard that story many times. I heard that in Sunday school, and I, I heard all that. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you some things in there, maybe some things you've never seen before, never heard before, that's really going to bless you and help you see how to walk by faith even when the storms come, even when everything gets hotter and hotter and hotter in your life, all hell breaks loose and it looks like you're about to go under. Listen, folks, we have a God that will never forsake us, never leave us, never let us down. And if we endeavor to believe Him, He will stand there with us. He'll undergird us and help us get through. And we'll come out stronger on the other side of the, of the test and trial than ever. So turn over to Daniel chapter 3. If you have your Bible, whether you have an electronic Bible like I'm using or your leather Bible, my leather Bible's at home right now. So which, whichever Bible you're using, pull it out. If not, we'll be quoting scriptures occasionally. I'll tell them, you know, put one up there for you to see. But uh, you know the story, so I'm going to kind of just bring you up because we won't have time to, to, to cover it in real detail. But in Daniel chapter 3, this passage before Daniel 3 and up to, through Daniel 3, King Nebuchadnezzar had a statue built. And he had this statue built to look just like him. <laughs> it was over 90 feet tall. It was nine feet wide. It was made out of gold. And then he made, made an announcement to all the leaders of Babylon. Now, if you remember, once Daniel got promoted under King Nebuchadnezzar, he then promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Remember the story where they now started running all the affairs of the province of Babylon? So they're big time up there. They're the up, upper echelon here of, of the leadership. Well, King Nebuchadnezzar calls all the leaders of Babylon, that, and he tells them we're going to have a dedication service, and that everyone was going to come to the dedication service and stand before the huge figure. So then when everybody's there, old King Nebi makes a decree. You know what kings do, they decree things, right? And so he made this decree that he was going to have all the instruments of music begin playing. And when, when they began playing and everyone heard the music playing, then everyone was to fall down. Some people give this story and they say bow down, but no. Fall down is what the scripture says in Daniel 3. You are to fall down and worship the golden image. That's what King Nebuchadnezzar declared. Well, of course, if you've read the story or heard the story, you know that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not fall down, right? Well, let, think about it. if you have a sea of people and everybody falls down and you're three that don't, you think you'd stick out like a sore thumb? <laughs> Yeah. Well, it doesn't say in the story that King Nebuchadnezzar saw them standing. 
Evidently he didn't because it actually tells us that the, the Chaldeans, who are astrologers, the Chaldeans tattletailed. They came to King Nebuchadnezzar and told off on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and said, Hey, you made a decree and we want you to know some of your very top leaders didn't obey you. Well, that's where we're going to pick up the story. I want to pick up the story in Daniel 3, verse 13, and we'll put the passage on the screen here for you as we go on so that you'll see. Uh, verse 13, Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. And look what King Nebuchadnezzar said in verse 14. Is it true? Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, that you don't serve my gods? You didn't worship the golden image that I've set up? And it's interesting, he asked them the question, but then before he even gives them time to answer, look at the next verse, verse 15, Daniel 3, 15. Now, if you are ready at the time, you hear the sound of the, the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, and the psaltery in symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I've made, good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning fire furnace. And who is that God? that shall deliver you out of my hands. So now here's the story. Here's what takes place. King Nebuchadnezzar hears about some of his top leaders, leadership, not doing what he's commanded everyone to do. And the Bible says he was in a rage and a fury. So when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego showed up, I want you to notice that he must have been calmed down by the time he showed up. They showed up. Because it doesn't sound like a rage and a fury when all of a sudden you're giving them another chance. Because look what he says. He, first of all, he asks them, guys, is what I heard true? That kind of tells me he likes these guys. He, he thinks they're doing a good job and he really is hoping it's not true what he heard because he'd rather keep them doing their work. They're doing a great job. So that kind of comes out that. So evidently by the time they got there, his rage and fury had subsided and he's He's okay, okay, you know what, maybe what I heard wasn't true. Maybe those Chaldeans, those astrologers are just lying, you know, fake news, whatever. But, but you know, let's, let's, let's see if what, what really happened here. But guys, listen, I'm going to give you another chance. I'm going to have all the instruments play. And so just fall down like I commanded everybody, and you probably did anyway. So just go ahead and fall down when you hear the music. And, and if you do, everything will be fine. No problem. But guys, if you don't, you don't fall down, I'm throwing you into a burning, fiery furnace. And who can deliver you out of my, what, what God can deliver you out of my hands? Now here's where faith comes in, folks. Here's where you can either walk by faith or walk by sight. Put yourself in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's shoes. All right? So first of all, you know, you have a test or a trial come. Right? The first test or trial that came was they heard that when the music instruments began playing and they saw that big nine foot tall, or, or not nine foot tall, nine feet wide, huge thing, 90 feet tall image, when they, when they saw that and they heard the music, they're supposed to fall down and worship, but, but they happen to know you shall worship no other gods before me. So these guys. They love God and they serve God. And so they're not going to let the evil from the world, government, whoever, dictate to them how they're going to live. They, they choose to, to live for God, even though all of a sudden the heat's being turned up, so to speak. So they know they're going to have to take a stand. And they also know, come on, from a natural standpoint, listen, we're going to have to disobey the law here. This is law. This is a king, a president. This is law. We're going to have to disobey. We're not falling down and worshiping because that goes against the Bible. So we're, we're not, and you know, I say Bible. It was Pentateuch back then for them as Old Covenant. But, but we're going to have to believe God and, and do what God says. So they, they probably think, you know what, our faith by standing, you know, God's going to probably send angels and just blind everybody where they can't even see us standing. And, and you know, we're going to come out the other side of this storm. <laughs> Man, faith victory, bless God. Yes, sir, this is going to get better because we're using our faith against this storm. 
And so they stand up, everybody else falls in worship, and they're expecting God to deliver them, man, because now, now they're going through a test, a trial, a storm. But all of a sudden, word gets to the king, and the king calls them, and, and so now all of a sudden things have gotten worse. They use their faith to make a stand, but now things have gotten worse. King Nebuchadnezzar tells them, okay, I'm giving you another, one more chance. You better fall down. And I want you to see what the words... Now, remember last program when we were talking about speaking. The last couple of programs, Jesus said we can speak. And when we speak, we say what God wants us to say. I'm telling you what, those words are powerful and will deliver us. So I want you to see that faith in God is even when it doesn't look like it's working, even though you've been using your faith and it seems like it's getting worse, look what, look what they did. They kept using faith. They said this. After he said, who is that God that can deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, verse 16, Daniel 3, 16. Look at it. Daniel, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered. What do you mean by answered? Well, didn't you realize in the previous verses that King, Neb King Nebuchadnezzar asked them two questions? One question, first question, is it true you didn't worship the God that I serve? And then did you notice the last question in verse 15? Who is that God that can deliver you out of my hands? Isn't that a question? Sure. So he said, is it true you didn't bow down and serve? And then if you don't bow down this time, who is that God that's going to deliver you out of my hands? Two questions. Let's see if Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered those two questions. This, this passage right here has been so taken out of context and made to say something it does not say. You know what most people say, think this verse says? Most think people say that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, you know what? Our God is able and is going to deliver us out of your hands, king. But if, but if he doesn't deliver us and we fry, we sizzle, we're still not serving your, your gods. That's what most people think they said because you can read it here. Look at verse 16, verse 17. They answered... O Nebuchadnezzar, we, verse 16, we have no need to answer, no need to answer you in this matter. In other words, that's kind of a little blind, even in the New King James, even the King James. Literally, he, they're saying, we don't even have to pray about this answer. We don't have to take time to answer this. We already know our answer. We have no need to wait. We already know our answer. And so here's their answer. Verse 17, if that is the case... In other words, you throw us in the burning fire furnace. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fire furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. Hmm. So that answers the second question. The second question was, who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? And they just said, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fire. And he, and he will. He will. Sounds like faith to me, doesn't it? And then in verse 18... But if not, that's where people have gotten confused. They think he, that they're saying, but if God doesn't deliver us. No, 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 no. No, no, no. They just made the statement, our God is able and he will deliver us. But if not, if you, king, don't throw us in the burning fire of furnace, you know what they're doing? They're throwing the ball right back in king. The king's just throwing the ball in their lap. Is it true, guys, you, you didn't serve my God? Oh, I'll tell you what, I'll give you another chance. And if you fall down, everything's fine. But if not, who is that God that shall deliver? So he's thrown the ball in their cart. All of a sudden, they stand up and say, um, if you throw us in the burning fire furnace, our God that we serve is, is able and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if you don't throw us in the fire furnace, be it known unto you, O king, we will not serve your gods nor worship the golden image which you have set up. Whoa, that is faith. That is letting the king know, throw us in, we'll be fine. Don't throw us in, we'll still be fine. But we're not serving any other gods. We're not looking to any other gods. We're not having faith in any other gods. Well, you know the story. King Nebuchadnezzar commanded the fire, the, the furnace to be turned up seven times hotter. That's just like the devil. That's nothing but smoke screen, folks. That's what the devil does when you're using your faith and it seems like, and really, when you put yourself in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's shoes, you've already taken a faith stand, right? I'm not going to fall down, so the first time you don't fall down. Then, in front of the king, in his face, you get in his face and say, we're not obeying you. 
We're not doing what you say. We're following our God. You throw us in, God will deliver us, and He'll deliver us out of your hand. If you don't throw us in, we're still not worshiping that stupid image you built. <laughs> and then what happens? They're thinking at this point, surely an angel of God will show up, smite King Neb, and we're going to walk out of here and everything's going to be fine. Nope. Wrong. It got worse. All of a sudden, the fire that was already hot enough to sizzle them was turned up seven times hotter. But see, that's just like the devil. When he sees you have faith in God, when he sees you using your faith, and he knows faith will stop every attack of his, quench every fire dart of his, he will just try and do anything that he can, grappling for straws, so to speak, and throw something else at you just to see if maybe he can get your eyes off of Jesus for a minute, get your eyes off the Word for a minute. He'll try and do that. So, so think about what King Nebuchadnezzar, he's just like the devil. He says, turn that, turn that fire up seven times hotter. Now, really think about it for a second. What difference did that make? Okay, boys, you were going to be sizzled in one second. Now you're going to be sizzled in a half a second. <laughs> it's so dumb. Turn it up seven like it wasn't going to kill him right away anyway. But see, that's like the devil. He's going to do anything he can do to get our eyes off of God. You and, you and me under the new covenant, off to Jesus. But you keep your eyes on Jesus. You keep your faith, have faith in God. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the next thing they know, they find the most mighty men in the army. You know the story. The most mighty men in the army come and grab them, bind them ham and foot, and then carry them toward the burning fiery furnace. You know what they're probably thinking in the natural? Because they had to face the same thoughts you and I have to. That's where we have to walk by faith and not by sight because our thoughts will try and get us off of faith in God. But they probably had the thoughts coming, uh, God, we're being carried to that fir fiery furnace. Um, uh, Any time now you want to show up, this would be a great time, <laughs> you know. But n he didn't show up. So then all of a sudden, they find themselves being swung. One... Do you remember the most mighty men in the army says, the Bible says that they're the ones that threw them in. And it says they threw them in bound hand and foot. So that means they couldn't be trying to get loose while they're flying through the air with the greatest of ease. No, they're flying through the air going into doomsday, going into the worst possible situation ever. They've taken a stand of faith. They've taken another stand of faith. And here they go in. If they'd have started doubting then, their faith would have shut off and that fire would have sizzled them. But they went into that fire with faith proved because it takes faith to please God and Jesus shows up. So you know they're going in in faith just like they said to begin with. Our God is able if you throw us into the burning fiery furnace and He will. Meaning they're realizing that, listen, if we go all the way into that fire of that furnace, Jesus, God's still going to deliver us. Yeah, so that shows they're in faith. Jesus shows up, and of course they start having a party in there, and King Nebuchadnezzar sees the party. And if you remember what, what, what it said, I think it was verse 22 here, that the most mighty men in the army got slain because the fire was so hot. So when they got close enough to throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in, they got slain. So the devil's, the devil's plans will always backfire when somebody walks by faith. And so... His most mighty men are dead. And then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego have a visitor in the, in the fire, and they're all having a party. The Bible says then, around verse 26, that ne ne King Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fire furnace and started carrying on a conversation with, with the three guys. He came near to the mouth of the burning fire furnace, the same place where his most mighty men a few moments before were, were sizzled. They were killed dead because of the, the, the power of the fire. And now he comes close, talks to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and it doesn't hurt him. Why? I'm going to show you in just a second. So, well, let's see. Let's pick it up. Verse, uh, well, verse 22 is the one, the flame of the fire slew the men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that, that you know, they threw those three men in, but it slew the most mighty men. Then it says, um, verse 26, yeah, verse 26, he came near to the mouth of the burning fire furnace, started talking to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and then he told them to come out. And um, this is so cool, so cool. 
verse 27, all of the leaders that were gathered there saw these men, look what the Bible says, saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. Not a hair singed, their garments weren't affected, and no smell of fire passed upon them. Why? Because, folks, any time you and I release faith, that was what Jesus was illustrating last program that we saw, the program before that when we were saying we can talk to the fig tree, we can talk to the mountain, we can talk to the sycamine tree, we can release our faith. Listen, folks, for a mountain to be moved out of a mountain range and cast into the sea takes a lot of power. <laughs> and Jesus says when you use faith in God, there is more power available to you and through you than any power of the enemy. Any problem, any test, any trial you're going through, any hardship, any Goliath that you're facing, the power of God is greater. And so, so they see their bodies upon whose bodies the fire had no power, no, no, no smell of folk. And then verse 28, Nebuchadnezzar spoke, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel, delivered his servants who trusted in him. See, that proves even when they went through the storm, went through the fire, they were trusting God, they were believing God, they did not get in fear, they didn't open the door for their faith to shut off, they stayed with it, just like they had said, our God will deliver us, even if you throw us in that fire, He will deliver us. And He did. And so therefore, in verse 29, the king made a decree that all people, nation, languages, if you speak anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you're going to be cut into pieces in your houses shall be made an ash heap because there's no other. Look at the last statement of verse 29. There is no other God that can deliver like our God. Let me show you, let me, let me show you uh, one more verse real quick before we close. Go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Remember, we're talking about Mark 11, 22, have faith in God. Verse 23, speak to the mountain and don't you doubt. Speak to the fire and don't you doubt. Speak to your, mo your monster, that, that huge situation that looks like it's going to overtake you. Speak to it and don't doubt and it will happen. It will happen. So look at, look at 2 Corinthians 4.13 with me. I want you to see this because this just helps sum it all up. And since Paul, Paul is talking to the Corinthians and talking to you and me, and he says this by the Spirit of God, since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. I think I'm reading from the New King James here. So he says, Paul said this, you know, what was written, and that was back in the Psalms, I believed and therefore I spoke. Then Paul says this, we also believe and therefore speak. We also believe and therefore speak. We also what? Believe and therefore what? Speak. Come on, look at me real close through the camera. We, we believe, right? And therefore what? Speak. We what? Believe and therefore what? Speak. We what? Believe and therefore what? Speak. So if we're believing, then we're going to be, yeah, speaking. And if we're not speaking, then we're not. Ah, oh, so if we're not talking to the mountain and we're talking about the mountain, we're not using faith at all. Folks, we got to be like Abraham. When he looked at his body and God promised him Isaac, and he looked at his body and the Bible said he was fully persuaded and strong in faith, strong in faith. He looked at his body, he considered the, the facts, and, and then in view, one translation says, in view of the facts, he would not stagger. His faith wouldn't be swayed. He, he decided to trust God no matter what. And his faith produced. He did the same thing we're talking about here. This says, we believe and therefore speak. Folks, you can determine whether you're in faith or somebody else is in faith by listening to their words. Are they speaking to the mountain or are they talking about it? Are they speaking to their situation and saying what God says about it? Or are they just talking with friends, a spouse, whoever? Are they just talking about, well, here's the, well, here's the problem. Here's, you know, we're not going to have enough of this. We're gonna, not going to have that. Not going to get through this. You know, you know, grandma had this same, same growth on, on her body that I got. Not now, you know, that you remember what it was, man. It killed her in six months. And quit talking about your problems and start 
facing the thing with a faith in a God that's bigger, a faith in a God that's stronger. Listen, folks, if it's about Him and not about you, then you get to rest and God will do all the work. He'll fight your battles for you. He'll release His grace and the grace of... Listen, God's grace is sufficient. You know what that means? Just what it says. <laughs> yeah, it's enough. It's, it's sufficient enough. It'll take care of everything that we have to face. Folks, we only have one minute left in this program, so let me just encourage you. I don't care what it is you're facing. I don't care what situation you're going through. I don't care what it looks like. God has given you faith, and it's not hard. The Syrophoenician woman operated faith. The, the centurion operated faith. Neither one of them knew Jesus, knew the Word, knew the Bible, knew anything. They just decided to believe Jesus. It's not hard to operate faith in God, and you can do it. I encourage you to go back and watch all 15 programs again because all it's going to do is cause you to magnify God bigger than you and bigger than your problems. And when you magnify Him so big to where that's all you can see, that's all you're going to have working in your life. Thank you, friends, for letting me share this series. Can't wait till we pick up on another subject the next series, but I'm telling you what, have faith in God. Use your faith. Watch God work. Thank you for your support. If you're not a partner yet, would like to help us support and reach other people, please consider sowing. Go to our website, LarryHutton.org. We'll see you next time. God bless you. Do you want to live a good life that'll never fall apart? Dr. Hutton's book, How to Stay on Top, reveals God's plan for you to never, ever fall again. You can be well equipped before you even face the trouble and come out on top of every trial. Do you think that God's power is far away and hard to reach? This three CD set, Power, will reveal that God's power for miracles, healings, and deliverance is right here, ready and available for anyone, at any time, for anything. Do you need more power, more courage, more faith? You need to power up. Dr. Hutton reads power scriptures from many translations of the Bible. Hearing and believing God's word brings the kind of life-changing faith that Jesus spoke of when he said, all things are possible to the one that believes. We'll send you this special package for any gift of $25 or more. Go online at LarryHutton.org or call 1-888-609-9589. Experience God's goodness by joining Larry Hutton again for more simple, practical teaching in God's Word. Go to LarryHutton.org anytime to watch this broadcast and many others. You'll also find today's special offer and other resources to help you thrive in life. Check on Larry and Liz's schedule so you can join them in a meeting near you. Just go to LarryHutton.org or call toll-free at 888-609-9589.